Alan Wake, American Nightmare, PC, short video game review. Alan remains where we last saw him, not giving away for anyone who hasn't played the first game, and he is now facing off against Mr. Scratch, his evil double, a serial killer type who keeps leaving these creepy video messages for him on TVs where, you know, you see what he's been up to. Alan is trying to chase him down and stop him, and some more rewriting of reality will be necessary. This one, it's a bit of a, basically the story is a time loop, and it does that decently enough, although for my money it would be much more interesting to explore that in with more settings, where this has fairly few, and in a longer game, this is only three hours, and it makes sense for this to be so short because there are so few, you know, locations, and it's not engaging enough. There are characters, but they're completely unmemorable and could easily be replaced by just finding more of the now entirely unsubtle manual style manuscript pages. I would say that it could be done much more interestingly in this, in a straight up adventure game, one that probably didn't even really have action, where there's a time limit to each scenario and you have to, you know, you can maybe go through the time loop more or less how many times you want and each time you have to find clues as to what has to be done in order to you know, progress past this part, this part of the time loop, or this time loop, and you have to do that within the time limit for the time loop to recharge. So you got to find out more and more, and you got to get quicker and quicker about doing these things. And as you go through the various scenarios, you also meet interesting characters, and the plot becomes more involving, you, you maybe discover what the origin of the time loop is, but yeah, here, nothing like that. This has an entirely self-contained plot, rendering it more or less pointless. The, there are no real puzzles, and really this focuses on the action, which is not really that strong of an element in the first game, and they barely do anything to it. With this more kind of off-the-wall, Literally, one of the first things that happens in this is you put on a, on a Kasabian CD and a meteor crashes into a satellite which crashes into an oil derrick. And that's, that about sets the tone, although the game doesn't really live up to that kind of off-the-world insanity, you know, for the rest of this, so they maybe kind of pulled up your Anderson that one. Anyway, th for the different tone here, the the enemy still being taken and you still having to use the flashlight and, and gun together in order to take them out does not make that much sense. Also, this entire game takes place during the night where the first one had this great setup of first you're going through an area during the day, then you're going through it in the night, and where it was serene, it is now threatening. And where it's very clear that, you know, you have to make as much progress as you can during the day because at night time you just have to fight to stay alive. In this, it's just constantly at night and you have to wonder why it's not much tougher. It doesn't really set things up as much. There's not that much in the way of, you know, setting atmosphere. It starts with this awkward exposition dump, which isn't even a recap of the previous games, which does also mean you know, previous game, which does also mean that this doesn't really give away that game, but this, the concept here is so com complicated that you have to explain it, and this game barely does that. This is not a sequel, but an in-universe spin-off, and really, the, the reason this was released at all, and the reason this has a single player at all, is to, the reason this was released at all is for the arcade mode, which is basically survival mode, and this has a similar campaign purely to distract players from the fact that this literally is just the survival mode, the arcade mode, which has five levels and 
the two, yes, two difficulty settings, and you have to play through some of the early ones to get access to some of the later ones. And this literally is just you in an arena, there's a, you know, clock counting down from ten, you have to fight until the dawn, and, you know, wave after wave, increasingly tough enemies, you gotta run around and get more, like, you know, yeah, more ammo, you know, try to heal, these kind of things, between the waves, and yeah. Which is fun enough, but really does not justify this not just being a free DLC for anyone who paid for the original Alan Wake. If you like this review and one more detailed one, the link will be in the description box. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.